Okay, now we're going to learn how to calculate the vertical center of buoyancy of our vessel. We're still using this pointy shaped barge shown to my right. For this calculation though, we're going to need water plane areas instead of section areas. So if we look here, this vessel will have the same cross section all the way through. So all the water planes are going to be the same. So if we calculate here, the area of the water plane. It's going to be the area of this rectangle from section 2 to 4 plus the area of a triangle at the bow. Well, rectangle is length times width, triangle is 1 half base times height. So we can fill in our values. The length is 3, the width is 2, The base of our triangle is two feet across, and the height is three feet. That will end up giving you an area of nine square feet. As I mentioned previously, it's assumed that this vessel has all the cross sections for the water plane will look the same. So at each of my water lines, that is going to be my area. Now the other question is, how many water lines do I need? Well, I need an odd number of water lines because I need evenly spaced sections to use Simpson's rule. So what I'm going to do, since my draft is one foot, my first water line will be zero, my second one will be in the middle, and 0 0.5 feet. My third one will be at the draft of one foot. So I have my zero foot water line, my half foot water line, and my one foot water line. Each of those water plane areas are nine square feet. Now we can use Simpson's rule. This time, because there are only three the multipliers will be 1, 4, 1. Multiply them to come up with my area times my Simpsons multiplier. So you'll get 9 and 36 and 9 again. If we continued on and totaled these, gain an answer of 54 square feet. And that is the summation of the area of the water plane times the Simpsons multiplier. If we went and used the formula, we could come up with the same displacement that we calculated using section areas. But we don't need to do that right now. We need to calculate the vertical center of buoyancy. So the next thing we need are the z values. The z value is the distance from the point of reference, baseline, up to the specified water line. So for the zero foot water line, z will be zero. For the half foot water line, it will be one half of a foot. And for the one foot water line, one foot. So I can fill in those values. And now I can just multiply across again. So nine times zero, zero. The next value will be 18. And the last value will be nine. I total these and get a value of 27 cubic feet. And that is the summation of the area of the water plane times Simpson's multiplier times z. OK, so if you notice, we've changed our spacing. Instead of being 1 and 1 half feet apart, like we used when we were calculating section areas, we have a new h spacing, since we're doing water planes. So h is going to be the total height, one foot, divided by the number of increments, we have two, so our h is one half of a foot. Actually, I am going to go ahead and show you how to calculate your volume metric using this. You take your h over three times the summation 
of area of the water plane times Simpson's multiplier. 0 0.5 divided by 3 times 54 cubic feet. That will give you 9 cubic feet, which will match the answer that we previously calculated. Now for VCB, that is going to be the area of the water plane times your Simpson's multiplier times Z, the summation you have there, which is 27 cubic feet, divided by the summation of the area of the water plane just times the Simpson's multiplier. So 27 divided by 54, and that's cubic feet divided by square feet, will end up giving you one half of a foot. That is your vertical center of buoyancy. Now let's think about this. Does it make sense? Well, since our vessel had a constant cross section, the vertical center of buoyancy should be halfway up between the bottom of the vessel and the draft. Halfway up is one half of a foot.